WFAA-TV. This is News 8 Daybreak. Eclipse chasers in El Paso may become the first in the world to get a glimpse like this of this morning's spectacular sun show. That is, if Mother Nature doesn't have other plans. That story tops the news as daybreak continues. Thanks for staying with us this morning. Well, El Paso is expected to be the nation's prime viewing spot for today's annular eclipse if cloud cover clears in time. A Channel 8 news crew plans to capture the show along with hundreds of other stargazers. It's the largest star party in the nation, but they're gearing up for one in Fort Worth too, weather permitting. Channel 8's Karen Kelly explains. This particular annular eclipse in North Texas is spectacular. Wade Weaver of the Fort Worth Astronomical Society is an eclipse chaser. With his telescopes and cameras, he's traveled the world documenting seven eclipses. Tuesday before noon, Weaver will be on the lawn of the Museum of Science and History with his new solar telescope. It's got a special filter, and he believes there are few like it in the country. What this will give you is a real unique uh, view of the sun. It's going to give you, the, again, the granulation in the surface itself, and it will show you the, also the texture of the sunspots on the sun. Weaver is testing his equipment. This is what the sun looks like, magnified 50 times by the new solar telescope. What happens May 10th is an annular eclipse, a special partial eclipse showing the sun's ring of fire. It's not as dramatic as a total eclipse, but 83% of the sun will be blocked by the moon. Yeah. Well, I see that flare. Yeah. Thousands of people will gather at the museum to watch. This telescope and others are expected to give the public a good look at the eclipse. No one should ever look directly at the sun unless they're wearing something that's covered with solar mylar, like these glasses. Now I can look at the sun and I don't have to worry about burning the retinas of my eyes. But welder's glasses won't work and neither will x-ray film. Eclipse glasses will be sold at the museum Tuesday. Some homemade projections will work too. And then there's watching the eclipse on TV as Channel 8 hooks up to Weaver's equipment for a look at the best eclipse we'll see in North Texas until the year 2000. Karen Kelly, Channel 8 News. If sun chasers chase clouds away, folks in El Paso should be able to see the first sight of the eclipse at 944 our time. Passengers aboard an airplane got a closer view of nature's historic show today. But in North Texas, they packed up their gear as cloudy skies shrouded the rare spect spectacle. Today's annular eclipse tops our news at noon. Thanks very much for tuning in. Students and amateur astronomers and television reporters were looking to the skies this morning. Channel 8's Doug Fox was among them in Fort Worth, and Doug says there wasn't a whole lot there to see. <laughs> Doug? Yeah, Scott, Renee, there's still not a whole lot to see up there except clouds. Uh, we have not been terribly successful at seeing this eclipse in the North Texas area because of this cloud cover. It's, uh, cloud cover. It's obscured the eclipse all morning long. We're outside the Fort Worth Museum of uh, Science and History because the museum has taken some special steps to try to show the eclipse. They had set up a, tele a telescope on the roof of the building and it was beaming a signal to TV monitors inside, but all they saw was a tree and not the sun. In fact, the youngsters visiting the museum this morning seem more interested in the gravity well than they were in what was coming in on the television sets. Outside, members of the Fort Worth Astronomical Society had set up a number of telescopes, but they finally gave up on the clouds and covered them up or just flat packed them up and took it all home. But one of the telescopes, uh, telescopes set up is a solar telescope. It's rigged to take a look at the sun, and it's also rigged to one of our cameras, and we want to take a look at what that camera sees right now. So, Steve, punch the button. We'll get a chance to see here live what this camera is supposed to show. But that's what you see. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It's, uh, the, the, the clouds are up there. Unfortunately, these telescopes will not pierce the clouds, so you can't see anything except exactly what you're seeing, which is nothing. Standing with me now is Randy Peters of the Noble Planetarium here at the, muse uh, at the museum. And Randy, uh, these telescopes won't cut through the clouds up here. Uh, we haven't invented a telescope that looks through clouds yet. <laughs> However, through the magic of television, we do have some videotape of the eclipse that was taken in West Texas and in White Sands, New Mexico. And Randy, if you will, tell me what we're seeing here. This is what you call an annular eclipse. 
This is where the moon is almost at its farthest point in its orbit around the Earth, so it's casting a smaller shadow than it would normally if you would have a total eclipse. So that's why you have that ring effect of the sun shining around the shadow of the moon. And that's because the moon, what, travels in an elliptical orbit as opposed to a perfectly round orbit? That's right. And it doesn't travel in the same linear plane all the time, so that's why you don't have an eclipses every month. Thus, we have the term annular as opposed to annual. Somebody that's <laughs> right. It's not annual. This doesn't happen every year. <laughs> now, it, this is interesting, but is there any scientific value here from this? This doesn't provide us with the kind of information we'd get from, say, a total eclipse. There's still a lot of glare coming around the sides of the, the moon there, so it's going to be very difficult to really see any of the prominences or a corona or anything like that you see during a total eclipse. That would be interesting. Some of those, some of those, uh, for what do they call them, the prominences Prominence, that, that, yeah. that burst off the side of the sun, they were telling me here earlier that those sometimes go anywhere from 25,000 to 100,000 miles up in the air. At any rate, uh, the cloud covers obscured everything here in North Texas. Uh, the videotape you saw, uh, the, the videotape that you saw came from White Sands, New Mexico. Uh, we knew have a, a we, well, yeah, obviously we're back here live and it's, uh, it's cloudy up there. Oh, uh, we have a picture now live from Springfield, Illinois. This one's coming in from, uh, is this path goes what, uh, sort of southwest to northeast across the country? That's right. Uh, that was sort of what we would have seen here if we didn't have the clouds in the way. Yeah, this would have been about what, 83, 80, 84 percent? It's around there somewhere. That's much, and this, as we say, is a live picture from Springfield, Illinois. And the videotape that you saw earlier of the, uh, the best view of it, the one with maximum uh, coverage, was about 93, 94 percent, and that was from White Sands, New Mexico. Since we missed it here in North Texas, at least seeing it live here in North Texas, you can stick around because all these folks will be back in the year 2012. That's 18 years from now when there is another annual ecli annular eclipse. The next total eclipse, unfortunately, is 30 years away in the year 2024. I hope I'll be around to see that one. I'm Doug Fox, Channel 8 News, live in Fort Worth. Renee, Scott? You yeah. will be, Doug. You will be. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, good, okay, Doug. Thanks. Well, it certainly would have been nice if we could have seen the annular eclipse from where we were, but uh, I believe we have pictures from the annular eclipse from White Sands, New Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Great. Where it Let's is. look. These are uh, uh, live pictures, and it looks like a crescent moon, doesn't it? But it's just the reverse. It's the moon in front of the sun. Uh. Uh, the peak of which of this annular eclipse was at 11.06 our time. Uh, so it slowly moves on off from White Sands. Yes, that's what uh, Renee was saying. From that's White Sands, though, New really. Mexico. It is a pretty picture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Eighty-eight point five percent, I think, is the maximum um, coverage over the sun caused by the moon. Quite nice. Quite interesting. It's amazing the technology that has advanced from eclipse to eclipse and how we can view these these pictures now. We never could have done this probably 15, 20 years ago. Certainly wouldn't have had the satellite capability. Working in the spirit of Texas, from WFAA-TV, this is News 8 at 5. That eclipse looks real well. If that cloud would come down, I think we'd be able to see it a little bit better. <laughs> Clouds block a solar eclipse here in North Texas, but in New Mexico, clear skies offer a clear view as the moon crosses the path of the sun. And that celestial show to, uh, tops our news at this hour. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Well, it happens only once every 30 years or so, but an annular eclipse crossed over North Texas this morning. The problem is no one could see it. Channel 8's Doug Fox reports. From the start, it just didn't look promising. Cloudy skies covered downtown Dallas as people walked to work or the courthouse. Whatever was taking place overhead went largely unnoticed. How about the eclipse of the clouds in front of the sun? All right. <laughs> Will that do? <laughs> Some even slept through the whole thing. Finally, one couple spotted something. Sure enough, it's right up there. Nope, just the sixth floor of the old school book depository. At the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History, youngsters seemed more interested in the gravity well than an eclipse. The museum put a telescope on the roof wired to a TV monitor inside, but only a fuzzy tree showed up. Outside, amateur astronomers gathered across the street, but the clouds never broke. 
Telescopes can see stars millions of miles away, but they can't get through clouds just a few miles up. Even if you have uh, 10 people come up and just see telescopes, it, it helps a lot to, to advance the science and give people a little perspective of what's really there to enjoy. And this is what they would have enjoyed had they been sitting in White Sands, New Mexico, an annular eclipse, the moon coming between the earth and the sun, blotting out all but a ring of fire, 93% of the sun gone for only a few minutes. Interesting and fascinating. But you've still got a lot of glare from the sun streaming in bes beside the shadow of the moon. So it's not that scientifically important as a total would be. Laverne Beiser has seen four or five total eclipses, and he's going to Peru next fall to see another one. Stargazing, you see, is addictive. Once you get C1, you're hooked, and you really want it. It's one of the most awesome uh, phenomena that you see in the Earth. But, and so once you see one, you want to see some more. For those who packed up and went home disappointed, they'll be back for a total eclipse in the year 2024. Doug Fox, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. And we are told the next annular eclipse to be seen in the North Texas area will be in the year 2012, mm -hmm. just a short 18 years away. A rare celestial event occurred today over North Texas, but you couldn't see it. Other parts of the country had a chance to see an annular eclipse of the sun. Annular comes from the Latin in the shape of a ring. In this case, a ring of fire from the sun streaking out from behind the moon's shadow. Unfortunately, a heavy cloud cover in North Texas eclipsed the eclipse, and amateur astronomers had only their memories to enjoy. And this makes about the fifth or sixth uh, eclipse I've seen, and the last two have been f f clouded out, but I've seen four or five that were really good. Laverne Beisner says he'll go to South America next November to see another eclipse. The next annual eclipse in this area will be in the year 2012. The next total eclipse, viewable in North Texas, doesn't occur for another 30 years. Working in the spirit of Texas, from WFAA-TV, this is the News 8 Update. Looks great, we're in. Come look, come look, everybody come look. Excitement filled the air as sky watchers gathered at what they hoped would be crucial locations to catch a glimpse of today's solar eclipse. The stellar events above us top the update tonight. Good evening. We'll tell you about the eclipse in a moment, but first, we'll check in quickly with Troy in the Weather Center for the latest on a tornado watch affecting our area. Troy? Well, thank you, guys. Yes, there's a tornado watch till 1 o'clock for the Dallas-Fort Worth area south and east. We've had no reports of tornadoes around here, just heavy rain producers. We have flash flood mornings for Bosque County till 1. There's been some flooding around Meridian and Ardell. Also, uh, 1230 for Johnson County and Somerville County. Some flooding there and some other flash flood warnings expiring at 10. But a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Hill County until 11 from this storm right here. Let's take a quick look at the way things have developed since this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Two main areas of thunderstorms. This one dropped almost four inches of rain in southern Erath County. And as we continue to see these storms develop and move toward the east tonight, a big one moves south of Waco, another one's moving south of Dallas Fort Worth. Not so much for the Dallas Fort Worth area where we see heavy rain, but the county's just south of here will. And we do still have that tornado watch till one. So we'll fill you in on the details later, but so far, just very heavy rain producing storms. So I'll see you a little bit later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Troy. Well, faces turned skyward this morning as the solar eclipse cast its eerie shadow against the sky. One of the best places to be to view the celestial showing was in West Texas near El Paso. That's where Channel 8's Sonia Van Sickle and photographers Tim Hamilton and Ben Pate spent the morning. Oh yeah, first contact, babies. We just, there it is. The activity began to heat up at first contact as the moon began its slow trek across the face of the sun. For astronomy buffs like these members of the Texas Star Party, the event was spectacular. They expected the sighting to be splendid, and they came prepared. We've got uh, one 16 millimeter with a 600 millimeter focal length lens, and then one 35 millimeter uh, movie camera with a 1,000 millimeter telephoto lens. So with those two, we should get some good shots. Even though eclipses can be plotted hundreds of years in advance, the meteorology of the moment is never predictable. All the planning that goes into a watch to see that instant of annularity when there's a complete ring of fiery sun around the moon can be obscured in a moment of cloud cover. And this was a cloudy day. Ah, Get out of here. 
but the sky soon cleared and the moon's journey looked perfect for viewing. And there was some fancy viewing. Everything from sophisticated instruments to mylar eclipse glasses to homemade contraptions with a Rube Goldberg touch. Young and old alike had waited for this moment. Excitement was evident as these youngsters began the countdown to annularity just before noon. 13, 13, 12, 11. This was an optical feast, and the moment of annularity, that mid-eclipse as the jagged edges of the moon entered the full disk of the sun, was spectacular. Is that not awesome? Is that not awesome? That is awesome. It's full. It's together. It's a ring. Come on. Come on. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Even if you care nothing for astronomy, seeing this phenomenon brings an amazement at the magnificence of it all. When you see the, the, the moon come across the sun, it's like the hand of God coming across and just, you know, just awe-inspiring. And in just a little more than five minutes, the moon began its exodus. For the moment, for these people, this is the most important place in the world to be. That is until the next eclipse in November but they'll have to travel to Peru for that one. Sonia Van Sickle, Channel 8 News, Dell City. Well, the only place North Texas residents saw the eclipse was on television. A thick cloud covered blocked most of the skies all morning long. Amateur astronomers outside the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History brought their telescopes in hopes for a break in the weather, but Mother Nature just wouldn't cooperate. Our eclipses get eclipsed by the clouds. Once you get C1, you're hooked, and you really want to, it's one of the most awesome uh, phenomena that you see in the Earth. But, and so once you see one, you want to see some more. Laverne Beiser says he plans to go to Peru in November to see a total eclipse, but it will be another 18 years before we see another annular eclipse in North Texas. The eclipse was a big hit overseas as well. Clouds allowed only a hazy view of the first eclipse to be seen over Great Britain in 10 years. But in Paris, the partial solar eclipse there lit the evening sky a brilliant orange. Pedestrians paused to admire the spectacle through the Arc de Triomphe. Certainly one of Mother Nature's most impressive special effects.